You can have the most professional camera in the world, but if you don't set up the settings that you need to before you go to a professional shoot, you're gonna have a bad time. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about ways that you can prepare your Sony FX6 before you go to your next shoot. Dialing these settings have saved me so much time and it's even saved me from having really bad footage on a shoot. So I wanna share them with you guys so you can prep your camera the right way. Now the first setting that you wanna dial in when you're in camera prep is going to be your auto black balancing. And that's a way to optimize your sensor. Actually, I don't really know the exact definition of black balancing, so let's just look it up. The main purpose of black balance is to eliminate any residual current being output from pixel sites under the conditions of complete darkness. Essentially just sounds like it's a maintenance check on your camera's sensor. There are some very rare situations on your camera where you might have blown out or burnt out pixels, and sometimes that might be a cause of having improper maintenance of your sensor. Now auto black balancing essentially is made to help optimize your sensor to prevent the things that it can't prevent from happening from actually happening. Next is to set up the custom switches that are on the side of the Sony FX6. Now there are two custom switches that you could tune to your liking, and one's gonna be your white balance and the other one's going to be your ISO or your Cine EI value, whichever one you're using at the time. Now the white balance switch gives you the ability to have preset settings for your white balance, which means that you no longer have to sift through your menus in order to find the proper white balance, especially if you use the same one most of the time. You could actually preset one of the three options in order for you to do that. The way that I usually use this is I leave my middle preset to be the daylight balance. I'd make something a little bit on the higher side at 71 or 7200 Kelvin, and then I use the bottom on the lower end at 2700 or 3300 Kelvin. A lot of times it saves me on set because I don't have to go searching through menus, getting up my gray cards, especially if I know the white balance that I want to get, all I have to do is flick a switch and it's already there. Next is going to be the switch for my Cine EI or ISO settings. Now I like using Cine EI on the Sony FX6, and I tend to actually use a lower Cine EI value than the base ISO that I'm going to be using, whether it be 800 or 12,000 ISO. Now the way that I preset these is I actually set them to the values that are below the native ISO. For example, the highest setting I'm going to have on the top switch is going to be 800 EI to match the 800 ISO. The middle is going to be my 400 or 400 EI, and the bottom is going to be my 200 EI while using 800 ISO. Now on the flip side, when you go into the high base ISO, your Sydney EI values, you could actually reset all three of those presets. So at 12,800, I have my lowest setting to 3,200 EI, my middle to 6,400, and then I actually match my base ISO at 12,800 EI. For me, that guarantees no matter which ISO I'm going to be using, I'm always going to be using a Sydney EI value that's going to help reduce the most amount of noise. Next is going to be dialing in your audio settings, and there's two different ways that you need to actually address this. First is going to be on the audio handle itself. Now on the top handle, you do have a switch with a couple of different options depending on the audio you're going to be using. If you're going to be using a microphone that doesn't have battery power to it, make sure you're using the plus 48 volt on the mic option. When I was less sure of what I was doing, I used to buy XLR mics and realize that they weren't turning on or they just weren't recording any sound. And after returning a couple of them, I did realize that I actually didn't have the phantom power at plus 48 volts, drawing power from the camera into my microphone. And when I got something like the NTG4, when I had that plus 48 on, it actually didn't work either because you have to go to the mic setting. So if you do have a microphone that has its own power source, make sure you're using the mic setting. But if you have one that doesn't have a battery in it, like the MK416 by Sennheiser, you wanna use the plus 48 to give it phantom power to make sure the mic is actually turned on. Now, to be honest, I don't know a lot about, and I actually never use the line feature. So you can comment down below and let us know what the line feature is because we're all about learning here. Now, on top of that, you wanna open the latch on the side panel of the Sony FX6 and make sure that you change your audio input from auto into manual. That way you can use the dials to the corresponding channels to make sure that you have the right levels of your audio. So if you have been noticing that your audio levels are a little bit weird, you actually might have auto on by accident. Now you've probably noticed this already, but there is an S and Q button on the camera itself. And what I like to do before I end up shooting with this camera is I actually set up what that frame rate is going to be when I press that button. Now you do have the ability to have multiple frame rates on the Sony FX6. However, depending on what resolution you're using, you're gonna have different frame rates that you can go up to. Now in DCI 4K, you have 60 frames a second. At 4K UHD, you have up to 120 frames a second. And at HD 1080p, you're gonna have 240 frames a second that you can map your S and Q button to in order for you to get slow motion. And make sure your touch operation is turned on. That way you can use some of the touchscreen features like your autofocus. Depending on the monitor you're going to be using, you could actually transmit all the information from the small LCD that's on the Sony FX6 into a bigger monitor by using the HDMI info setting. Now I do this if I've met two types of criteria. 
One, I don't want to use the LCD screen. It's a little bit small, it's not that sharp, and honestly, it's hard to look at in terms of composing a shot. And two is if I'm using manual focusing lenses. And the reason why I want to do that is most of the time I'm only using the touch operation to use the autofocus. But on a manual focus lens, it actually doesn't make a difference. So what I tend to do is actually output the screen that would have been on the LCD out to my monitor like the Ninja 5 Plus or my Hollyland Mars M1. Now, when using your autofocusing settings and you're going to be working with people like I do, using your eye slash face only autofocusing or your face or eye priority is going to be the best situation for you. That makes sure that when you're working with different subjects that are probably obviously going to be people, it's going to make sure that you dial in your autofocus. Now, that might not be the only thing that's going to be out there for you. You're going to have to pay attention to your autofocusing speed and your autofocusing sensitivity. Now, when your autofocusing speed is turned all the way up, your autofocus is going to be incredibly fast, moving from subject to subject. However, if you're working in a situation like an interview or something where you want to keep things locked in, or you just want to have slower rack focusing from different subjects, using a slower autofocusing speed is going to help you out there. Now, in terms of your autofocusing sensitivities with your subject, this is going to be a case-by-case -case situation, just like your speed. Now, if you have things that are going to be a little bit more responsive, this actually might work really well for things like sports when you have different subjects in frame and you have to switch pretty often. However, if you want to go the other direction, like a locked off interview or documentary, when you're only trying to focus at one thing at a time, using the lower sensitivity takes away that autofocusing responsiveness, which means as new things enter the frame, it's going to take a little bit longer for it to grab onto that focus, or in some cases, it's going to lock onto the thing you initially focused on, and it's not going to focus on anything else that's new coming into the frame. And lastly, before every shoot, format your SD cards. <laughs> Because there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a shoot ignoring the fact that you didn't have as much space as you needed to and either having to stop the shoot to go and do a quick backup or accidentally formatting and you've lost a bunch of hours of work that being said these are all the tips and tricks that i have to actually set up your sony fx6 before you shoot to save yourself a ton of time and at least a ton of headache now there are a whole bunch of other things about the sony fx6 that you can use to make your life easier or to make your shoot that much more professional and the youtube algorithm thinks you might actually like that video over here because there's some hidden gems and some hacks that you can use with this camera that you might not know about